On the surface, they seem very similar. They are both auteur directors of anime films making original movies for family audiences, or at least general audiences, that do well domestically and internationally. Which is why a lot of people consider Mamoru Hosoda to be the next Hayao Miyazaki, but I'm not convinced. Firstly, the two have very different outlooks on life. Hayao Miyazaki has always been more of a communist, or even socialist, depending on how you define those words and how they're defined in Japan and all that complicated stuff. Whereas Hosoda's films are more about individualism and celebrating people finding their own way in life. Ashitaka in Princess Mononoke is cut off from his people and finally finds some kind of contentment by integrating with a new group of people in Iron Town. Nausicaa is all about sacrificing herself for her people, and in the manga, the world. There's not really a decision that Nausicaa makes that is not somehow about her sacrificing or doing things for other people. Indeed, Kiki is all about Kiki learning to be a good productive worker in society, member of the proletariat. What she does is basically leave her home to become a worker to integrate into society in a productive manner. In contrast, for example, Ame from Wolf Children and Kyuta from The Boy and the Beast, they both make their own trails through life. They figure out their own ways to live. Even Mirai, which is about a young boy realizing he is part of a lineage in his family, is not so much about him subsuming himself into his family as using his past to help understand himself. It's about uh, him learning to be a better person, not a better cog in the wheel. Furthermore, they both kind of came of age as directors at completely different times, which really colored their roles in the anime industry and in animation in general in very different ways. Hayao Miyazaki came of age in the 70s when anime was still an unknown really internationally and was not a significant cultural force in Japan yet. He was also recognized as one of the great animators of the time, as somebody who had a, a lot of quality in his work. So there was a certain um, uh, interest within the otaku community, which was just forming at the time, in his work. And this allowed Hayao Miyazaki to really become much more visible at the time. He really pushed himself ahead by moving out of the animation chair from behind the animation desk, so to speak, into the director's chair, working on Lupin and things along those lines. Hasoda, in contrast, while he did do animation back in the day, um, he was definitely much more known as the guy who worked on Digimon and as um, more of a director. And he came of age when anime was already popular internationally. People knew what this stuff was, and he came to anime with its long history, appreciating that and trying to um, make more works in that style. And that style is another important thing. Miyazaki kind of believes that all anime should look like a movie, that anime should have this naturalism to it. And by naturalism, I mean the way characters move. Um, characters should not leap 20 feet between you know, parapets and things like that, which is ironic considering that's what they do in, in his work in the 70s. But um, he, he's really big on this very grounded approach to animation. While Hosoda doesn't go too crazy with his uh, animation style, he's much more willing to let anime be anime, to have characters do the equivalence of face faults and be a little wacky and be that kind of all things to all people that great anime can be. Whereas um, Miyazaki's films are much more focused in that way. And sometimes that's an amazing plus to his films because they're all very much of this uh, very focused sort of um, <laughs> approach and style but sometimes that 
kind of conflicts with the kind of story they're trying to tell, and it, and it turns into a sort of an awkwardness in presentation. Um, I personally think that Howl's Moving Castle and Ponyo both suffer from this, where they are these, you know, um, big, huge, fantastical stories, but the characters rarely feel big and fantastical in and of themselves. So um, there's kind of a, a, a bit of an awkwardness there. Whereas Hosoda can feel, um, Hosoda's works can feel bombastic and his characters can become bombastic because it's anime, right? And he's willing to let anime be stylistic in that kind of over the top way, not too to over the top, but more than Miyazaki seems willing to do. And again, I'm not complaining here, I'm just saying these are two different ways of thinking about the medium. And it gets to one of the things that's kind of really complicated about these two creators. Miyazaki famously has said he does not make anime. He does not like anime in and of itself. He considers anime to be cheap TV animation that's basically for, you know, uh, adolescents who are trying to escape reality, whereas he makes art. And... Um, I wouldn't say that, I mean, maybe he doesn't say I make art, but that is definitely the direction he's leaning in. You know, he's definitely leaning away from the wildness of anime. So Miyazaki holds himself above anime in a sense. He doesn't make anime, he makes animation. Whereas Hosoda embraces anime. His works feel like they are part of of anime in general and learn from anime, whereas Miyazaki's works are kind of set apart. And again, this is not a complaint, it is just different approaches to the media. Also in general, while both directors certainly have an agenda, I think it is less obvious in Hosoda's works. Sometimes Miyazaki's environmental messages, for example, are worn very much on his sleeves in his stories. Um, whereas I think Hisoda isn't trying to do that. He's trying to tell stories that are more about individual personalities. Um, they're not these grand war epics, uh, although big things can happen, but um, his films are more about individual people dealing with individual people problems. And I think it's one of the reasons why some folks bounce off of Hisoda's films, because they are a little more personal, um, uh, and they, they don't have that save the world grandeur that some of Miyazaki's films do. Um, or even if not save the world, um, a, a, a sense of, I don't know, epicness, if you will. Kiki is, um, she's not saving the world, but there is a, a sense of this, this um, grand adventure that she's on. And so I, I think that is something that you have to get used to with both of these directors, that Miyazaki's films are ironically in a way more international, you know, they're easier for a general audience to consume, whereas Hisoda's films are more personal uh, and thus not always as easy for the average sort of just popcorn, you know, eating, um, you know, blockbuster uh, movie viewing kind of public to get into. So those are a few of the differences between Hisoda and Miyazaki. I do not believe Mamoru Hosoda is the new Hayao Miyazaki. Things have changed. It's a new world. Uh, it's, it's a different times than it was when Hayao Miyazaki came in. And so Hosoda is not going to do what Miyazaki did. And that's, in a way, wonderfully appropriate because Hosoda's films are all about people forging their own new paths. And I think that is what Hosoda is doing in his films without feeling beholden to Hayao Miyazaki's incredible legacy. I'm sure he'll learn a thing or two, and I think he has. But Hasoda is his own person, as it should be.